let's just take a basic pattern, which is three. We'll have one, two, three. It could also be one down, two up on this pattern. It could be two over here. Followed with one here. That's the three or the Y pattern. Uh, another one, if you want to go to four, of course, four is easy. You're just going to do equal sections. Now, when I do four, I always go from the inside out, the way the plant grows. So three and four. Now, four doesn't have to be like that. Four could also be two down and two up. Recognizing patterns is very important with flowers. We could have three. And one down. You could even have four all the way around, just uh, four straight across. So that's four. Now here would be a five pattern. Just think of a star or a person, a head, two arms, and two feet. Many, many flowers use the five pattern. Three, let's take this three pattern and let's make it into five. So there's three. Now I'll need two more. I'm just going to, well, no, it's going to be a little different. But not much. See, these ones are straight. These ones are more balanced, like this section here. Coming in like a triangle with one on top. Oh, well, six would probably, there we go, one, two, three, four, five, six. A good way to understand the petals are to take your little pattern and see if you can add a balanced petal arrangement. Now you'll notice that at some point my petals are going to have to hop over the other petal. See? And you'll find with flowers that not all of them have enough room to stand out exactly the same. Some hide behind others. And so this little exercise is great. You can actually make your own flowers. Let's put a little bit of a something in the middle here and we'll add little dots so you're using geometric shapes which nature uses all the time and uh, let's add some zigzags on this one it also works for leaves now how do i get these even i go zigzag zigzag zig Zigzag, zigzag, zig. So I've got the same on each side. Usually, uh, almost probably always, leaves are symmetrical. Now you can use a pencil for these little exercises. I'm using a pen because you can see it. And the pencil sometimes doesn't show up as well. Let's understand a big thing in flowers, and that's called foreshortening. You know, you can look at a flower from above, and it will look something like this. Let's take the, the humble dandelion. Now you'll see that all of these flicking out from the center, 
create a very simple round pattern. If I want that flower to turn on the side, I have to start not with a circle as we did with this one, thinking with a circle. I want to think uh, oval. So I'm going to put the oval in. And the petals that are closest to you are going to be shorter. See? And then as we get to the side, they get longer. This is to create what's called a foreshortened image of your flower. And you can get this by simply picking up a dandelion, a dandelion or a daisy and actually just looking at it. So now I'm going to adjust it a bit. And the shortest ones are right in the middle there. Say we had a flower arrangement, we'll put a couple round ones and a couple oval, some more rounds, oval, oval, and let's say we just had a small zigzag around each one. You'll notice these all look the same, but these ones will be foreshortened. Oh, got to hop over there. See, foreshortened. And these ones would be round. So there's lots of hopping over. You're hopping over other flowers. If you don't do that, you, all your flowers will look isolated. So we'll try this one. And this is merely an exercise for you to get used to the petals and where they're going to be, especially if you're doing uh, a design like this. So maybe they're sunflowers. And then down we go. Maybe this one's turning. And there's lots of hopping over to do, see? 